Hey there. Sorry about that distraction. So, so as I was saying, uh, they they substituted the transcriptional domain of a different kind of domain, and you can see with the interacting factor that it just doesn't have the same activity as the normal protein. It doesn't degrade. Whoops, sorry. It doesn't degrade the interacting factors so it's just interesting to note that a different kind of transcriptional domain won't have the same effects as the original one the protein has which is this particular 9AA TAD. Again here though we'll see that uh, inside the mutants uh, they're, they're expressing these class B genes and and you'll see that a uh, different kind of transcriptional domain won't make a difference though in this function here because the these class B genes have a lot of expression just like the just like the wild type. So in this case, the different kind of transcriptional domain will do the trick. It's, so it's just kind of interesting to note that even though the same region is needed for these two functions, not the same exact uh, amino acids are needed. And at the end of the paper, they have this kind of little picture they painted uh, with Himera, this orange molecule. It binds to the interacting factor, and it mysteriously recruits all this machinery to transcribe the class B gene. And also recruits some, some of this yellow bag here, which basically is a proteasome and degrades the interacting factors. But this one guy is doing all the magic here. Apparently is their conclusion here. So some of the major findings of this paper to, to just make it really short. Uh, in the beginning, they discovered that Himera activates chloroplast development. Uh, so some of it gets shunted to the chloroplast uh, when light is in the picture. And then uh, there's the whole digression on uh, phytochrome interacting factor it binds to Himera through two regions, through its APP region and its BHLH region. And then, uh, then they talk about mm, Himera and what region of Himera that binds to, that degrades the interacting factor and transcribes their target genes. It's the same region called this 9AA TAD. Uh, it's really the first, fifth, and ninth amino acid that are essential for these two functions but they aren't necessarily the, the exact same amino acids that do the same functions, uh, which is degrading the interacting factor or transcribing their genes. And those are basically the solid concrete findings of the paper. The paper goes on to have a very lengthy discussion, which I'll just summarize here, but they speculate that this dual mechanism of degrading a protein and then transcribing its gene is an anciently conserved mechanism that uh, happen in the ancestor of plants, animals, and fungi. And they reason that it was it's kind of like a biological mechanism that was evolved to kind of have a two-stage check and balance, you know, because if you're if you want to start growing leaves and uh, put in all the energy of having leaves and chloroplasts, you really want to make sure that light is in the picture. And so this kind of two-check mechanism, is a way of you know asking the the plant cell, are you really sure we have light? You know, and bypassing both of those steps is just a, a way of ensuring we're not going to waste all this energy for no reason. So that's kind of like the the major findings of this paper here. It was a pretty long paper, but at the end it was pretty rewarding to to see some of their findings here, some of the magic that is done by just one particular region of a, a protein and um, how it all makes sense when you kind of sit back and look at the whole picture. And that is all, thank you.